dear C64 fans, hobbyists, enthusiasts, and anybody else watching this video, this is a review of the Ultimate 2 Plus cartridge, which is obviously a cartridge that plugs into the back of your C64. Probably the most opulent, decadent, the most luxury item and absolutely for me, necessary items now you can buy for your C64 and any retro gaming machine, in fact. It cost me just over £150, including PMP and a little extra I'll talk about in a moment. From Gideon's Logic, I'll link that in the description below. And he's from the Netherlands, Holland, not from Germany, like other... Uh, I've watched other YouTube videos and they're saying it's from Germany. Not at all, it's from the Netherlands. There you go, Gideon. I'll put it right for you. From Holland. I've had it for a few weeks now. It arrived pretty quickly. And what is it? Well, like I say, it's a cartridge that plugs into the back of your C64. But it's a cartridge that highly emulates the 1541 disk drive. Now, for those who don't know, the 1541 disk drive was about as big, the original was as big as the C64, certainly heavier than the 64 itself, and when it first came out, it was about as expensive, at least here in the UK, as the Commodore 64 itself. Basically, it allows you to load up floppy disks. The reason it was so big and heavy and expensive, it had its own micro circuitry, its own sort of microchips and PCB, printed, printed circuit board included in the disk drive. I don't actually have one. <laughs> I'm just pointing to a, a vacant gap over there. Imagine it's there. Anyway, but it basically did a lot of trickery when, it, when you put a disk in, it would do a lot of the processing power, then pass that over to the 64 for some amazing effects in games and demos, especially in goodness knows what. Some of the best games were Commodore 64 disc games, in fact. It loaded them a lot faster than it would and a lot more accurately than it would do with the data set. And the demos were massive at the time. This, people are saying, has 100% accuracy compatibility with those disk images and demos and images and goodness knows what from what i found i've had a hundred percent accuracy i've had it for a couple of weeks now or over a week and i found it's had a hundred percent accuracy so far with what i put on it now when you compare that to the sd to iec i'm going to link you to my original review of this at the moment this is a third of the price of this so it's about 40 to 50 pound but it acts more like a hard drive for your commodore 64. the compatibility of disk images especially is actually quite low well it's not as good nowhere near as good as this i would say it's about 60 to 70 percent compatibility with disk images when trying to load demos especially more modern demos of this on this forget it it would load a, a couple of older demos that didn't use the fast load feature or the wizardry that the 1541 drive would put in some games are tried to a game like rocket ranger believe it or not rocket ranger did release on the commodore 64 and i had it on disc Trying to get that to work on that was a nightmare. I eventually got it to work, not to 100% accuracy, but I found an image that did work eventually, but it took me days. Sometimes when I just want to play a game, I have to go through various images to find one that's compatible with this. I'm not knocking this. That's great for the price. And if you just want to play a few games, it's perfect for you. If you want that compatibility and want the demos especially, I was massive into the demo scene on the Commodore 64 back in the day. Arguably, you could say the demo scene really took prominence on the Commodore 64. That's where it really started and kicked off. And then it sort of uh, translated to the Amiga and uh, PCs and goodness knows what. But you could say the Commodore 64 was the original home or certainly one of the original homes where it all really kicked off and started on the Commodore 64. This has massive compatibility, 100% so far with what I tried. I'll show you a couple of demos on this. 
absolutely fantastic. So that could be a good reason to buy it. Good reason to splurge out that £150. But it doesn't stop there. With this extension here, this data set extension, it allows you, you plug that into the side here, that's not a USB 3, that's to actually plug in the data set extension. It allows you to play data set games as though you were loading it from a data set. So you would get all that glorious loading music, some of the best music on the Commodore 64, came from data set games, the loading music on them. Now you can emulate it, well now you, you can use this, and load up a, a tape image as though you're actually loading it from a data set. Highly accurate on that as well. And that's a feature. You can buy this with or without this. You can buy this without this if you want to for 10 euros cheaper. You might as well splurge out that 10 euros and get this just for the experience. Particularly if you had a data set unit back in the day. Or if you didn't have a data set unit, you can experience what we were experiencing with some fantastic loading music. So it's a nice little extra. Another thing, it doesn't stop there. Another thing that this gives you as well. It's obvious, obviously a cartridge that plugs into the back of your Commodore 64. You've got a lot of cartridge utilities on this. Now you can buy cartridges for your Commodore 64 like the Dead Test cartridge, the Diagnostic cartridge, Action Replay, Easy Flash. This allows you to do all of them on one cartridge. Which is fantastic. So things like the action replay where you can freeze and put in pokes and mess about with the actual coding of games. It's included in that as well and you can, it's actually included when you get the cartridge. It's got a lot of cartridge utilities but you can add more to it as well. And cartridge games. Some games only came out on cartridge. Put them on a USB drive. Plug that into your unit and then you've got a vast catalogue of cartridge games if you want to, like I say some that only came out on cartridge that you can now use with this. And if that wasn't enough, it's got an emulated second SID chip on this. For those of you who don't know, the original Commodore 64 came out with, I think it's a 6581 SID chip, and this emulates the 8580. Forgive me if I've mixed those numbers up. <laughs> Um, hopefully I've got that right. But this emulates a second SID chip, so you can have a dual SID chip set up now. I've got the original 6581, and this is the 8580 SID chip in here that you can emulate in a dual setup. Get some speakers or plug it. There's a line out on this that you can plug. That, there you go, that green one there. Plug a line out, oh I've not got it to hand here, plug it into a pair of speakers, stereo units or straight into your TV, have that dual SID setup. It's actually quite important as well because another feature, the line out feature, is that you can play amazingly Amiga uh, music files, mod files they're called basically. So these are Amiga tunes that you can play to immense accuracy, amazing accuracy, not 100% accurate, but very, very good accuracy on this cartridge as well. Controlled by the 64, but actually more controlled by this uh, cartridge. I'm going to show you that feature as well. And if that wasn't enough, it's got an REU. Now, does that stand for RAM Expansion Unit? Something that you could plug into the back of your 64 back in the day. You can expand the RAM, which is 64K, to something like a megabyte. This allows you to go up to 16 megabytes RAM Expansion Unit. Now, there's no games at the moment currently specifically designed for that, but there are demos that take this to a whole new level. I'm going to show you that as well. So as you can see, this gives you a whole lot. Enough of the chatter there though, that's an overview of it. Let me now set up my 64. I'll plug this in and give you a demonstration. Oh, before I do that, better explain, you've got a few buttons on the back of this. Now let me get this right. This middle one is one that you'll be using. You won't be able to see me do this because they're at the back of the cartridge and I'm going to have it plugged in there. So it's going to be difficult to see me press these. But the middle one takes you to the menu. It basically takes you to the menu system where you can then load various games, demos, mess about with the actual settings of the cartridge. I believe 
This one, no, oh, I don't know. I think this one's a reset and this one's freeze. Oh, that's freeze. Not, I think that's right. I think that's the reset button. So the Commodore 64 typically didn't have a reset button. It's got on an on and off switch, which you'll have to cycle the power to reset the Commodore 64. That's now got a reset button and a freeze button. Freeze button would, would be when you freeze a game and start messing about with the cold of the game or putting pokes and peaks and goodness knows what. So I'll be messing about with them when I attach this. Let's attach this and show you how it works. Okay, so I've got a cartridge plugged in, USB plugged into the side, which contains your disc images, games, and goodness knows what, and demos, and goodness knows what you want on there. I've got the cartridge itself connected to the serial ports on the Commodore 64, the data set extension connected as well, and the line out to the speakers. I'm not going to turn the speakers on yet, I'm going to show you that later. I'm going to have the sound playing through my TV for now, but I've got that all connected as well. So let's turn on the Commodore 64. Power on. Now, when you buy your Ultimate 2 Plus cartridge, this is the screen you're uh, presented with, and it can be quite confusing because you don't get that traditional Commodore 64 4 screen with the sort of... Uh, it goes into the Commodore 64 basic, goes to this screen. Now, looking on YouTube before I got this cartridge, I knew how to cure that. Basically, what you want to do, it's up to you, you can keep that screen. Uh, many of us don't. You press the middle button, which I showed you before on the cartridge, that takes you to the menu system on the cartridge. Now, I want to go to the setup utilities to set up the cartridge to have a different image showing when I cycle uh, when I when I cycle my 64 when I turn my 64 off and on. I don't want that image that you saw before. To do this, you want to press the F2 key. To get to the F2 key on a Commodore 64, you got F1 and F2 on the same key, F3 and F4 on the same key, etc., etc. F 5, F6, F6, and then F7 and F8. To get to F2, you hold down Shift and press F1. That takes you to the setup menu for the cartridge. Now, we want to go to the corresponding menu to set up the cartridge settings on this, which is C64 and cartridge settings. Press Return there. Use the cursor keys to go up and down. So Shift, cursor key, to go up and then just down to go down and left and right. I'll show you that in a bit more detail later. C64 and cartridge settings. It's that top item we want, the cartridge. It's currently on the retro replay, replay version 3. Press return there and using the cursor keys I want to slow scroll down to a different cartridge setting. So when I turn my 64 on I don't want that one we saw before. I'll use the Epix Fast Loader, which gives you a more traditional startup screen. Press Return there to select it. Now you can see it's selected. Press the Instant Delete key. That's like a back key to go back. Once again, save. Do you want to save settings to flash the flash on the actual cartridge? Press Return to say yes. I'll turn my 64 off. C64 off, rather and turn it back on again. There's a different way of doing that, but I'll show you that traditional way for now. Now you can see you've got the more traditional, uh, more familiar screen when you start up your 64. So let's press that middle button again. I want to load up. One of the first things I did, I want to load up something, is go... I wanted to load up a demo, because I couldn't play demos on this thing, modern demos. Like I say, I was massively in, into that, so I really wanted to see that. So, I'm going to select the scan disk, scan disk, sand disk, which is my USB stick. That's what it's called, it's called a sand disk. Press return to get into that. Press enter again. Now basically, when you pop the uh, USB into your computer to put files on there. You can just put your files on the parent of that USB. There's no specific setup to this to get this working. Put whatever files, disk games, tape games, you can just put them on your parent thing. I put them in different folders. Very easy to do. Let's go to demos. Press return, it will say, what do you want to do there? Rename, enter, delete. Enter, rename, delete. We'll enter into that. 
The first demo I, I played actually was Desert Dream because it was one of my favourite Amiga demos and it works amazingly on this but last night I saw another demo, We Are Demo it's called by Fairlight and I found this fantastic. Remember this is running on a Commodore 64 before I play it. If you had a disc drive you could actually play this demo on that disc drive but let's show you this. Let's show you what the Commodore 64 is able to do. Press enter. Now you can run the disc or mount the disc. What I find better is actually mount disc. So press enter there. I'll show you that. If you run the disc, it will ignore that fast loader cartridge thing that you had in, and it will just run the disc in a, as it would on a normal disk drive. If you mount disc, press return. Now using the traditional keys you would use to load a tape, Commodore key and run stop, press that. It will come up with that funny writing, but it will actually load the disc and actually run it. Let's take a look at this demo. Just wait for it. C64 rules, absolutely right. Here we go. And this is running from the original SID chip. I've not got the dual ch the, the emulator chip connected yet, or the speakers turned on rather. We are demo. Look at that, you never got that on a 64 back in the day. This is a more recent demo. Look how quick that 3D blocks, those 3D blocks move. Incredible. This is why we love demos back in the day. They really showed what the 64 could do. Amazing. Look at that, this is going towards Amiga quality in demos. Fantastic. Like I say, if you had a disk drive, you could just use this on your disk drive. Download the actual uh, demo disks, put it on disks somehow. Play it on your disk drive. Look at that, for the Commodore 64. Trust me, that's outstanding. Show you a little bit more of this because it's a really great demo. Look at that for Commodore 64, remember? Wow. Anyway, there you go. Oh, hang on, let's show you this part. This is quite good. <laughs> there you go. Listen to that music as well, running from the 6581. Outstanding. Anyway, let's use one of these buttons on the back here. Apologies if you want to see more of that, but press the far 
right and then it resets to 64. What I like to do after doing sort of anything like demos and different things, if I want to go to the next thing, I press F5. Now this takes you to more like the uh, main sort of uh, reset, reboot, restore to factory conditions. By the way, I restored this cartridge to the factory conditions before starting this video. Just to show you what different things you can change in it, change in it to make it more uh, better for you, basically. So what I like to do is actually go down to Reboot 64, press that, and then it just reboots it, cleans anything out of memory, and goodness knows what. Now, another thing I wanted to see when I got this was actually how the dataset thing would work. So let's go back. So I'm holding Shift and the left-right arrow key, cursor key there. That goes back one on your uh, sort of uh, menu on your USB drive I've got plugged in there. Got demos there, let's go down to tapes. Press enter, press enter again, or return, press return again. So I've got all these tape images. So it's like basically now you've got your data set units connected to your C64. Let's go down to, where is it? Last Ninja, Last Ninja 1, which is actually this game. Now with this one, you press return, so I'm choosing that to load by tape. And just go down to run tape on this one. And that will run the tape, so basically you press the Commodore key, and you don't have to here, but traditionally, normally, Commodore key and run stop. Press play on your data set unit. Uh, in a moment, it should come up with found last ninja or something like that. Highly accurate, of course. Just press the space bar to go to the next part. And then the data set will start whirring, and goodness knows what. And it will go into the loading of the game. So it takes the same time as it would if you had your data set connected to your Commodore 64. This is how we loaded games back in the day. The good thing is now... You don't have that sort of incompatibility or your tape didn't load correctly, especially now 35 year plus games that don't always load first time. This loads pretty much first time every time. So there you go, you have those traditional lines going up and down a screen that you would when you loaded a tape game. And in a moment, this is the best part. Come on. The loading music. Beautiful. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to buy that. You can save yourself 10 euros and not get it. I think it's just worth it. Why not? It's worth it for the experience of sitting there. I prefer playing The Last Ninja via tape than disc. Even though disc is a lot quicker, I just prefer playing it by tape because I like listening to this loading music between each level. Each level you would have to load the next level and you'd be treated to this, these fantastic loading musics in between each level. And there's other games you could try there as well. That's the last ninja. I'll tell you what, let's reset that. So press the reset button again. Just reset it for now. Uh, let's try one that's very popular back in the day. And that's Rambo. So, run tape. So if you didn't have this and you just had your data set connected, once again, you come with OK, run stop, press play on tape. This does the same thing. When you press run tape, you've done that, basically. Just show you this one quickly, then we'll move on to the next thing. So as you can see, lots of fun. High compatibility with disc images and demos, which I'm spending too many hours. I was up late last night playing demos and goodness knows what and trying things on this. Loving it. And that's only half the story. Just wait to see what else this can do. So it's found Rambo, now it's loading it like it would a, on a data set. So you'll see some squiggly lines going up and down in a moment. 
yeah, don't disappoint me, there you go, so it's still loading. And then, one of the data sets, games I would choose to load from tape this. And The Last Ninja, before that. Hello. So there you go, it's Loading Rambo. And you get that fantastic loading music. The amounts of times I must have loaded this hundreds of times back in the day on Dataset just for the music. Forget the game, the music itself was the important part. There you go, and it would load it exactly like it would on a Dataset. as you can see. So you've got that feature. So I'll tell you what I'll do there. I'm going to reboot F5 once again, go down to reboot 64, just to clear anything out of the memory. Instead of recycling, sort of cycling on and off the switch, just going to go to reboot, recycling, cycling, not recycling. <laughs> Press reboot 64, just clears anything out. Of course, I've loaded demos, I've loaded tape, of course it's going to load disc games as well. That Rocket Ranger, let's go down to that. I've got various things here. Rocket Ranger was released on the 64. See, my preferable, my preference way of playing Rocket Ranger is via, where is it? There it is. Is on the 64 rather than the Amiga. But let's show you that. It's just a disc image I put on Rocket Ranger. I'll press enter there. Rocket Ranger, once again, with disc images, you press return, mount disc. And then you can fast load it using the fast load cartridge. So Commodore key, oops, and run stop. And it will do all the necessary things for you and actually run the disc. You don't have to do anything more there. Oh, you can hear that. It emulates the actual uh, disk drive noises as well. You can turn that down if you want to. It's a bit loud at the moment. I'll turn it down later. That'll be in the F2 setting, in the settings menu. Well, that's a great little feature. There's no disk drive, no physical disk drive in there, but it's emulating it. It's running it at the speed you would if you had a disk drive. Maybe slightly faster with the fast load uh, connected. Fast load would be a cartridge like that you would plug in the back of your 64 and it would just fast load games or demos or goodness knows what. And this does everything for you, <laughs> which is amazing. So convenient, that menu system. Can't stress that enough, highly convenient. How? Oh, here we are. And there you go, it plays Rocket Ranger. Brilliant game on a Commodore 64. Highly recommended if you've not played it on a Commodore 64. Let's get past this part. Let's get to the actual game itself. Highly accurate, no problem at all. I'm going to look forward to playing this through again. Look! Takes me back. Takes me about 30 years. Beautiful. And then etc. etc. you get into the game. Reset the Commodore 64 again. I'm gonna just reboot it to clear anything out of its memory and goodness knows what. So what we did before it just reboots it. So that's great, all those disc games. Cartridges. I did say you could play cartridge games on this, and you can. Just put them on your uh, USB drive. Go up to my cartridge thing there, my cartridge menu, or folder rather, menu folder, and let's try, let's try Batman, shall we? So press return now, just run cartridges. Run cart. Now you've just plugged your cartridge in. Obviously with cartridges, like any system, they just load automatically straight away. No look, waiting time, just loads. And of course now you can play Batman. I won't play it one-handed, just using this boomerang joystick. Link to my boomerang video. Again, highly recommended joystick for the Commodore 64 gamepad. And anyway, you can play Batman. Now, if I try and reset that, 
it doesn't because it's acting now like you've got that cartridge plugged into your Commodore 64. There's no resetting. You can't use that reset switch when you plug a cat when you play a cartridge game. You've got to go down to that F5 menu and go to reboot Commodore 64. Or turn your Commodore 64 on and off. I'll just do it this way at the moment. While we're in the cartridges, let's just show you another. I think Clowns was an original cartridge game. I'm not sure if it came out on disc. Probably did. They had a conversion later on for disc or tape. Last Ninja Remix. But then Robocop 2. This is a fantastic cartridge game. Run cartridge. And of course you've got all those utilities. I'm not going to show you the action replay utilities on this. But if you want to pause games. Look, straight in. That's a cartridge game. Uh... Just go straight into the game and you can start that and goodness knows what. No waiting around with castries. There you go. And then you got Robocop 2. Great game by the way. Only just discovered this recently. Uh, I'm not going to show you the... Let's just go to the menu system. I'm not going to show you the uh, action replay and how that works. Basically you can freeze games and then put pokes and peaks in. I've not actually done that yet but I will be looking into that. So I won't show you that on this video. But well, there you go, that's the basis of loading games and cartridge games and disc games. You can see how compatible the whole thing is. Now, let's take you to another amazing feature. Let's show you the sound features that emulators, SID chip and the mod player. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so here we are. So let's show you the uh, sound options on this, the actual uh, emulated chip and mod player. So I'm going to go to my menu system, press the middle button on the cartridge, go to my uh, USB menu folder, enter into that, go into SIDS, and even though I've got my speakers connected to the uh, Ultimate 2 Plus cartridge, I've not got my speakers turned on yet. I want to show you something First, I'm going to go to C64 Music. This will take me to the uh, HVSC. So basically a file you can download from the internet which contains pretty much every piece of music or most pieces of music out there for the Commodore 64 from games and uh, musicians and goodness knows what. I'll go down to T there because I want to go to Jérôme Tell. Now please don't copyright me over this. I'm using this as an example, Jérôme. <laughs> Just using one of your tunes to demonstrate this example. Go into Girontel, or Tel Giron. And that 11 Heaven Sid. Now I'm playing this on my 64 chip that's in there, the 6581 chip. Take a listen to this. Press return, play main tune. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, it sounds slightly distorted, not quite the way it's meant to be played. The system is the chip I've got in, the 6581. The SID is the actual SID that should be used for this piece of music. It doesn't sound quite right there. That background tune is not quite right. So, what we'll do there, I've got my TV control, it's TV control for the big TV in the next room, but it's Sony, so it works on this as well. I'm going to press the mute button, as you can see now, my TV sound is muted. I'm going to go into the menu system on the uh, Ultimate 2 Plus cartridge. Remember, I've got this at factory reset defaults at the moment, so shift and F1 to get to the menu. Go down to audio output settings. Now what I want to do, I want to change the SID to the 8580. So you see where it's got 6581 there, left filter curve. Just use the cursor key left to change it. 6580, and same for the one beneath it. Same for that one, and same for that one. I also want to change that sort of snoop address there. I'm not fully sure what am I doing. I'm not fully sure what that is, but I want it down to the same snoop D400, because that's what the SID best plays at. So I'm just going to change that as well. D400. So that's all set up. Press your back key, so that's the instant delete. Press it once, press it twice, and save changes to flash. Yes. Now, sounds muted on the TV. I'm going to turn my speakers on. This is all connected to the cartridge, don't forget. Let's play that tune again using the emulated 858 chip. Play tune.
Much better. Very accurate as well. Oh yeah. That's the way it's meant to sound. Beautiful tuners, by the way. Well done, Sharon. One of my favourites, in fact. Beautiful. So that plays exactly as it should, using the emulated sit on that. Now, let me show you something else. Let's just go back there to my main SID folder and let's go down let's just show you which one. Oh, let's show you actually let's show you Martin Gal's ways Martin Galway Terra Cresta tune now I'm going to show you how you can mix in the sound I've got the speakers on I'll, on, I'll play the this SID play main tune great tune maybe turn it down a little bit from my speakers at the moment. I'm going to unmute my TV and you get an interesting effect. I don't know if you can hear that. So let's mute it. That's the emulator SID chip playing. Mix in the real SID. You get this like pseudo stereo effect. Now you can have one SID playing on one speaker. It's a bit loud and the other SID playing on the other speaker. I've not quite done that yet, but I'm just mixing in the sound from the TV, my SID chip, with the emulator chip. You do get this quite amazing stereo effect, or effects, like a, a difficult to explain, but it's an interesting effect. Interestingly, let's turn off the speakers. So that's the TV player now, my SID chip player. It's difficult to play this accurately, you really want the 8580 chip to play this one. Mixing them both together, it plays it as it should. So there you go, that's a demonstration. Probably not a very good demonstration, but I did try. Actually, let's show you a different one while I'm here. There's another one that's great. It just shows you a demonstration. It's not so much dual SID, but it's actually, well it is in a way, it's actually playing my SID chip from the TV and the emulated one from the speakers. You can actually change it so it comes out from either speaker two, I believe, or your stereo system or whatever. So you get sort of more true effects of that dual SID. But let's show you which one is Light Force. Light Force, very popular SID. So I've got it playing from the TV and the speakers, so the real SID chip and the emulated SID chip at the same time. Let go a bit further. Brilliant tune this. You get that swirling effect that really you've got to try it. It's probably not picking it up with my mobile phone. I hope it does. You do get an amazing effect. So whatever, that's a quick demonstration. So yeah, any 8580 tunes that don't play properly on the 6581, mute your TV sound and then play it from the emulator SID chip and it plays brilliantly, having lots of fun playing that. That's a SID chip feature. Let's show you now the Amiga tunes, the mod tunes. Now this won't play from your TV. If you don't have that line out, you need a line out to play these mod tunes. If I didn't have this, if I try to play a mod tune, let's turn the speakers on, off, and just play one of them. You will find nothing will play, nothing will sound. You need the speakers on for it to play. Anyway, I won't show you that in a moment. Let's do this properly. Let's Reboot my 64. There you go. Go back into it. It'll take you back into that same menu. Turn my speakers on and let's show you one of these tunes. Let's turn that volume up on my speakers a bit. Need a bit more volume. One of the tunes that I remember fondly on this 
uh, Amiga was Blood Money. I love this. Listen to this. This is not playing from the 64 now. It's essentially playing from the cartridge using some kind of trickery. The 64 is controlling this part of it, the menu part of it. The actual cartridge is controlling the actual mod tune. Let's show you this. Play tune. And you get true stereo on this too. Isn't that brilliant? Bum, bum. Just messing around. Listen to that, and you do get a stereo separation as well. That's brilliant. So, blast that out of your hi fi system, guys, if you got one. <laughs> now, apologies, my memory storage in my phone had filled up and my battery was also running out so i've had to do a quick cut there so we're testing mod tunes for the amiga so i showed you blood money let me show you another fantastic tune and that is lotus one let's play that slightly different <laughs> There we go, we get that fantastic noise. I don't know if you can hear it, I've got the drums playing here and that main tune playing here, so you do get that stereo separation. Isn't that amazing? So let's show you a different one. So yeah, connect that, connect your hi-fi to that. Put a lead out to your hi-fi and really blast it out. I'm just using a crummy old pair of speakers here. Let's show you, oh, something different. James Bond 2 Robocod, one of my favorite mod tunes back in the day. Let's do this one. Something different again. There you go. Come on, that's outstanding. Coming from a Commodore 64, essentially. Kind of coming from the cartridge, really, but still. Look what the Commodore 64 is doing. Oh, Spectrum owners. You must be biting at the bit at the moment. You do get that when you press the menu button, you can get that residual sound sometimes, but don't worry, it's not going to hurt. Let's do something different again, Alien Breed 2. Completely different sound, heartbeat, atmospheric music. You can see why I was up to one o'clock last night, just... <laughs> Playing these tunes and just messing around with that cartridge. Loving it. I'm gonna have many a late night coming in. Yeah. Listen to that. Isn't that fantastic? And okay. Just to, there you go, you got that residual tune. Just to finish off, let's do the tune that everybody plays. Great tune, Lotus 2. Title. Wow, 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 wow. Wowsy, wowsy. Are you tempted yet to get one? <laughs> have certain channels. Amiga had four channels, so I've turned off one and two. Let's turn off three. 
and you've just got one channel playing. Let's turn them all back on. So you can mess around, turn the channels off and on. Just a lot of fun. A lot of great memories. So there you go. That's the mod modding part. Many an hour I'll be using that because <laughs> I love my Amiga mod tunes. It's very accurate. Not not 100% accurate with the mod tunes, but it's good enough, especially running from a Commodore 64. Let's now show you the last thing before I come to my conclusion for this cartridge. But, ah, let's, let me sit that down again. Let me go to my F2. Oh, let's go back one on that menu first to get to the root directory. There we go. And let's go to the uh, setup for the cartridge. Shift and F1, so it's F2 essentially. I'm going to show you the RAM expansion unit. Now to use this, we have to go down to the C64 and cartridge settings. We have to change that cartridge when you boot your 64 up. It doesn't work with this Epix fast loader for some reason. So I have to change that back to, it works with the one that I, it was originally, that the cartridge comes with originally a retro replay version three. So I'll choose that. We have to go down to RAM expansion unit and enable it, obviously. And the RAM expansion size, I'm going to put it up to 16. Now this is the actual uh, REU demonstration. So instant delete, instant delete, save settings, reboot. I don't know if you need to reboot there, but I'm going to. I've been playing mod files. There you go, we get that familiar menu you get when you first buy your cartridge. Go to the middle button there. Um, I want to go to that. REU at top there, blue REU, enter into that. You've got to load where it's got blue dot REU and you've got 16 megabyte there. You've got to load it into the RAM expansion unit. So you, what, how to do that, select it, make sure it's highlighted, press return, load into RAM expansion unit. Give it a second, it will load in. That's loading 16 megabytes on a Commodore 64 like that. Remember, this is a 64K machine. That's 16 megabytes just loading. In. And then just go to the program below it. Blue Crest, you can see program there. Press return and just run this one. So this is effectively, I don't know what I had on my screen there. A 16 megabyte demonstration what can be done. This is quite special. This first part of the demo is just a scroller. You got this typically on a lot of demo intros. Let's just get past that, press space bar, get to the next part, the main part of the demo. Very high res picture. And they're doing some amazing things with that. That the Commodore 64 shouldn't be doing, but it is. Yeah. Look at that. That's going towards Amiga level. Really is. It's amazing what they can do. Effectively what it's doing, it's like using uh, frames of films and putting it into the RAM expansion unit and you're getting all these clever effects that you can do which Commodore 64 could never do back in the day, no way. There you go, I'll just show you a bit more of this.
probably better on a Commodore monitor. I'm using a TV for this, but if I had a Commodore monitor, it would be a lot better, I imagine. Look at that, though. Recycles now. Recycles just loops. Why do I keep saying recycles? It loops back to the beginning. So that's the RU. I'm in the midst of my computer. I'm in the midst of downloading about a gigabyte file, which has all different films that I can load into the uh, RAM expansion unit, and it'll show you all these different effects and films. I'm going to have lots of fun doing that. They haven't created games, unfortunately, with that RAM expansion unit. Imagine having games that take up 16 megabytes of data on the Commodore 64. They haven't done that. They could do something like Dragon's Lair or Space Ace, those sort of arcade cartoon games back in the day. That could be done. We do have Dragon's Lair on the 64, but it's not anything like the arcade quality, but you could do it with that RAM expansion unit. S still groups developing for that, and it's an exciting future. So that's another feature of the uh, Ultimate 2 Plus cartridge. One more feature before I take you to, to the conclusion that you have. On the side there, you've got a sort of Ethernet, Ethernet port. For, you can plug in basically an Ethernet cable. I think you can use the, uh, you know, sort of internet cable. You could use the Raspberry Pi as a bridge. So if you're using Wi-Fi like I'm, use it as a bridge. So the, the Raspberry Pi has a Wi-Fi and then you connect it to this a cartridge via a cable, and you can connect the 64 to the internet and use old BBS boards and goodness knows what, something I'll probably try in the future. Let's take you to my conclusion. So here we go, my conclusion. Is it worth paying £150 if you get that sort of a data set expansion thing, or about 140 without it? Is it worth the money? For me, I've absolutely no regrets buying it. It's like taking your 64 to a whole new level. The Spectrum recently, you probably heard, got a new computer, like a fan-based built computer, the Spectrum Next. Allows you to play Spectrum games. It also allows you to play games which are similar to 16-bit Amiga and ST games, improve sound capabilities, like a brand new computer that you can buy basically, but you can play old Spectrum games on it. This to me, until we get it, is like the Commodore 64, the C64 Next. It takes this to a whole new level. The dual ch uh, chip feature, being able to play mod files, being able to use that RAM expansion unit to 16 megabytes. The huge compatibility. The ease of use with that menu button and just being able to load and swap games so easily and change the cartridges or do whatever you want with it. Well worth it. You can get by. Look earlier in the video for the link I put on this with the SD to IEC. It's going to cost you a third of the price. You can get by on this. If you want to play modern demos and games that use fast loader, you're not going to be able to do it, and the compatibility is a little bit of an issue on this, but you can get most games to work on it. But this, with it's pretty much 100% compatibility with tape files and D64 files and demos and goodness knows what. It's worth every single penny, and I hope this video has helped to make your mind up. But do let me know. Give the video a like comment below and subscribe for more. I love my C64. I love my retro machines in fact, so I'm going to be making videos on these all the time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.